morning. We welcome you today to our service here as the uh, Memphis Church. If you're here with us for the first time, we welcome you and pray that you feel right at home. Are there any announcements this morning? I do want to announce that the beautiful flowers under the cross this morning are placed there in honor of Francis Garanzi on her 90th birthday by John and Bonnie Garanzi. Happy birthday to John's mother. All right. There are, there are some announcements in your bulletin. Uh, several things there, front or middle and back. Uh, we want to announce there will be a um, SPRC meeting the day after church. Um, so for SPRC mid members, we hope you can stay and be a part of that. Are there any other announcements? We will have Disciple Bible Study tonight at 6 and Tuesday night at 6. Margie. We're still selling jewelry until early March, so if you're interested, see me after church. I didn't bring the board, but I have a photo if anybody's interested. Okay. Dan Robinson Circle, selling jewelry. See Margie after church. Okay. Are there other announcements? There will be a backpack um, meeting on the 11th of March. If you can help with that, we have time to go before that. If there are no other announcements, uh, if you will take a moment, find someone you've not yet greeted and say hello. Bring to lift you up, to tell somebody 
about you and our life and what you want to be in their lives. Strengthen us and give us the words and the wisdom and the knowledge and the understanding that we need. <coughs> Not just to be blessed, but to be a blessing. Bless Rick as he brings the message. Fill our hearts, strengthen us, Lord, in all things. And I pray, Lord, we will never fail to give you the praise, the glory, and the honor for all. For this I ask in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stand as we sing our first hymn, Marching to Zion, page 733.
So here, here's what I thought that I would tell you was on my brain. So today I, I'm going to take time to write a letter. So I have to have a pen and an envelope and some paper. And I have to run to the grocery store. So I have this little book that I make my notes in. Because if I, if I don't make a list to go to the grocery store, then I buy things that I probably shouldn't be buying. And that's why I don't ever send kids to the grocery store. <laughs>
that for 90 minutes, and this includes you guys too, for 90 minutes, let's free ourselves of all those things that we have to learn and give all this space to his word and what's within here. I'm going, I'm, I, I did this all say for myself, so I'm going to try to do this. And I'm asking you all to do it. And I guarantee you when we all leave here, we free up our minds of all the things that's going on that we have to do or that's going on in the world. If we just give these 90 minutes out of all those 1,440 minutes in a 24 hour day, we give that to him that on this special day, and we're going to learn more about his word and feel a whole lot better about what he has to tell us. Can you do that? Okay. Let's bow our heads and pray. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for our many blessings in life. Thank you for these children that come here weekly to hear your word and to hear these children's minutes. That is up to us to give them wisdom on things that we have learned through you. Lord, be with us throughout the week. Be with these children as they go to school and help them to be the person that you want them to be. Watch over and protect them. We ask these blessings in your name. Amen. Amen.
we will go to the Lord in prayer, and as we always do, uh, we will invite you to share with us your prayer concerns. Um, and we'll get a microphone to you. I do have someone that you would like to lift up. I want to share with you this morning, um, Harold Green did have his surgery Thursday morning. It uh, wasn't as bright and early as it was supposed to have been. Actually, it was late in the evening. And, um, but um, Harold's surgery went well. It was a success. They removed the top upper portion of the left lung. Took some lymph nodes as well to have them tested. They believe that they have all the cancer. Uh, so Harold is um, doing well, doing quite well after having such a uh, major surgery. The only thing is, Harold reminds me of me and with doctors. Um, I don't think Harold's been in the hospital much. I haven't been at all. And so visiting Harold would be like visiting me, Paula. It'd be like every little thing. So the funny thing was that we, we laughed so much through this whole thing. So they were removing the tubes from Harold. Um, the two young nurses came in and Harold thought they were younger than they actually were. So he asked them, have you done this before? <laughs> And one actually had a sense of humor. She said, well, actually, we just come down the hall and we watched a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, Harold, though, um, did go into the atheism right after that. Uh, and, uh, but he, they're doing well. Keep Harold in your prayers. He'll be there, maybe home a day or so. Um, so keep him in your prayers and, and, and send a card or call or visit. Ellen McClure, Ellen is in Hospice West, um, which is not behind Thomas, um, as well as Herta Rowney, Patty's mother. She too is in Hospice West. Uh, <coughs> Ellen and Herta and their families in your prayers. Ruthie Nav is recovering from her stroke. She is um, the rehabilitation unit at General Hospital. She'll be there for like the rest of this week. She's doing well. She's getting her strength back. She went through extensive therapy, but um, she's your prayers as well. Are there others this morning? Any other prayer concerns? My mother's cousin, Mike Chambers, he's in just a park over. Okay, Mike Chambers. Okay. The family of Carolyn Miller, Carolyn Tammy Bauer. Bauer's mother. Sorry, what? Tammy Bauer that works at Premier Bank for my Okay, Carolyn Bauer, right? Or Miller. Carolyn Miller, I call it. Carolyn Miller family. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Mary Brown. Mary Brown. Mary, yes. Okay. Please pray for my aunt in Florida. Mary Jo Kirkley and her husband Bill Kirkley. Okay. I have um, two prayer requests. Right. My sister Kendall Rod, she has Bell Paul right now. So we're trying to get they're gonna try to get her fixed. And also my um, friend Paul Paul, his name is Freddie Adams. They think he has cancer again and he's been having real bad stomach pains. And he stopped breathing for a little bit for a few days ago, so just keep him and my sister in office. Okay, thank you. Rick Scott and Lynn will go in for hip replacement surgery Tuesday. Scott and Lynn. I think I'll eat all of them. Okay. My psychology professor, I'm not even about to try to pronounce her last name, but she goes by Dr. M. Okay. Um, she has stage 3 breast cancer and they just found three more tumors in her brain. So she is still teaching us, it's just it's kind of hard on her and she's starting to lose her eyesight. So just keep her in your prayers please. Thank you Paige. My grandmother Hazel Casto is uh, kind of at the end of her last journey. We're not expecting her to make it beyond the next few days. So. Um, as far as I know, she has not accepted Jesus, so please pray that she does and pray for my mom's family. Okay. Rick, I'd like to ask for prayer for Kim Shaw. She suffered from second and third degree burns uh, this past Wednesday, and she has surgery tomorrow for that. Okay. 
Hallelujah. I thought you were waving at me. You were trying to get the microphone. Yeah, I was waving. You were okay. Were waving. Um, my friend Doe, I go to school with him at UC. He's from Dubai, and his sister is a few years older than us and just passed away. Um, so he had to hurry up and buy a plane ticket and get back home, and he's had to miss a bunch of school, and um, his sister was very young, and it was very unexpected. So if you could keep Doe and his family. Joe. Um, in your prayers. Yeah, Doe. D-O. Uh, D-O is his name. Doe. D-O. Yep. Yeah. Uh, J-O. D-O. Yes, Doe. Yes, Doe. Thank you so much. Three. Yes. Uh, I'd like to ask for prayers for my mother and Halstead. I went to see her the other day, and she's starting to show some signs of dementia. Okay. She told me something five minutes later. She told me the same thing again, and it's really hard to, really hard to watch. Thank you. Okay. Are there any other prayer concerns this morning? By show of hands, there are any unspoken requests? Do join with me. New each and every day, O oh Lord, are your mercies. And Lord, moment by moment, your love for each of us only grows. Lord, we look all around us and see where you are. Yet, God, you're even closer to us than that. We thank you, Lord, for the fact, Lord, that you are our breath, you are our being. We thank you, God, that where we are, whatever we're going through, you're more aware of it than we often are. Every day we are reminded, Lord, as our journey continues, just how much we need you. We need to trust you more and trust ourselves even less. Or we are reminded often how short life is, but as also, Lord, how precious life is. All of life is a gift that you have given to us. This moment is the only moment we are promised. And Lord, we live in light of the fact that eternity is only but a breath away. So Lord, do help us put out of our minds as Deanna taught us all the things, Lord, that for right now are not important. Free our minds, open our hearts, that at this very time we may be able to listen and hear what you would speak directly to us, but give us the faith, Lord, to do it. Lord, on this day, again, we are privileged to be here to pray, not just to worship, but to pray together. And as we do, we lift up each other. Lord, not all of our needs are often spoken, but yet, God, again, we know you hear the cries of our hearts. And we pray for that neighbor of ours that, Lord, go through whatever life ends them quietly. Yet, Lord, they need our prayers too. Let that one right now know, God, that you're with them and that you're answering prayers. And Lord, let Harold know as he's there in that hospital when we are here. Lord, that we are praying for him. Lord, let Berta feel the power of prayer and Ellen and their family. Let Ruthie, Lord, be aware of your presence more than ever there in her hospital room. And Lord, if her mind, and we pray for the family of the, the Miller family, for each of them, Lord, be present. For May Mary and, and Mary Jo and Bill and Kendall and Freddie. For Scotty and Joe, for Dr. M. And Hazel. Chris and her family. We pray for Phil. We pray, Lord, for Anne. Lord, and so many others. In your mercy, hear and receive our prayers. And help us, Lord, not only be people who pray, 
Lord, but people who are able to do, to do for others what you have for us to do, so that they too would not just hear about the love of Christ, but they would see it in action. Help us now, your people, once again pray the prayer of faith your, our Lord taught his disciples long ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. The ushers, please come.
John's Gospel, chapter 15, beginning in verse 9. Hear these words. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you obey my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. If you do what I command. I no longer call you servants, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. Let me read that again. Then will the Father give you whatever you ask in my name. This is my command. Love each other. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Maybe see And off he goes, 
He's longer than a minute. I know he is. Seems to take forever. Now I think, where is he? Now, what is he? And all of a sudden, he comes walking up. And he opens the door. And he looks at me real weird like and said, Go on in. <laughs> I told you. you know, I'm here. And off I go after it's all said and done. And I walk right by carrying these shoes. Now, what he is thinking, I don't know. But, you know, it's so good to have friends. Especially friends like that. But what do we mean today when we mention the word friend? What in the world today is a friend? Jesus said, you are my friends. But then there's that catch. I don't know if you caught it or not. Jesus said, you are my friends. What? If you do what I command. It seems like there's a catch there. Right? We sing that hymn that we just sang. It's a beautiful hymn. What a friend. We have in Jesus, but I can't, you know, I, I, I can actually be Jesus' friend, but I'm wondering if Jesus ever says, what a friend I have in Rick. What a friend I have in this person. We hear about people talking all the time about being disciples. And in the Book of Discipline, our, our mission statement is actually uh, that we are to make disciples for Jesus Christ. That's our mission statement. The United Methodist Church. To make disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. We are reminded of that often in meetings. That that's our purpose. To make disciples. We hear a lot about disciples. It's a disciple of one who uh, follows Jesus and learns. Uh, a disciple is one who sits at one's feet, actually, and learns. We hear a lot about servants, being a servant, and, um, and serving Christ. Paul himself, who wrote so much of the New Testament, Paul called himself a servant, a slave even, a bond servant, one who has volunteered to give his entire life, the rest of his life, all of it, to Christ, a servant. We are a lot talk, mentioned about being a child of God, and I like the sound of that. I am a child of God. The imagery there is so beautiful, how we can be children of God. Joint heirs of Jesus Christ. Wow, the, these titles, these they just keep going on and on and on. They sound wonderful. But friend, Jesus says again. You are my friends. But I wonder what Jesus meant by friend. Jesus, after all, we read the Gospels, Jesus radicalized so many terms that to us seem so simple. For instance, the term neighbor. You ask Jesus, you know, what do you mean by neighbor? One person in the Bible asked Jesus, who is my neighbor? Now, growing up, we, we, well, I said, who's your neighbor? We, well, uh, the, they live about a mile down the road. If you look here through those trees, you can see their house. All right? Those are our neighbors. But you go past that, and, you know, they, I don't know if they qualify to be our neighbor or not. They may live too far away to be our neighbors. <coughs> Jesus radicalized the term neighbor to mean Someone who is not necessarily next door. Someone who necessarily, you might not necessarily want to live next to. They told the parable of the Good Samaritan. And in the end, the lawyer who asked the question, who is my neighbor, is perplexed as he had to identify the least likely one as being his neighbor. His neighbor. Then there's another time where Jesus is teaching. Oh, well, it's in this room of some sort. I imagine maybe it's not the size of this one. I don't know. But he's in there teaching, surrounded by people. And all of a sudden, somebody comes up to him and says, Lord, uh, your mother, your, your mama, is, and your brothers, they're, they're, and your sister, they're right outside there. And they, they whatever they want, they're out there. And Jesus, oh, he has a mother that I have. Or and maybe you like some of you have. He probably wouldn't have lived past the age of twelve. He said, Who are my mother? Who 
Who, who is my mother? Who are my brothers and my sisters? Like, what? Who are you? Who are you? And, and, and Jesus then said, those who do the will of my Father who sent me, they are my mother and my brothers and my sisters. I don't know what to think about that. Every time I read it, it still bothers me. But Jesus radicalized the terms that we think we know what they mean. So when Jesus says, you are my friends, what did Jesus mean when he called them friends? Even though Jesus says to his disciples that you are my friends, it does again seem that friendship there, for even for Jesus, is conditional. Friendship with Jesus is conditional. Do you know there are two people in the entire Bible, two people who are specifically, now we, I know here Jesus says it to the group, you are my friends, but we read that as kind of like, I don't, I don't know what to take it. Now, think about that just yet. Because in the whole Bible, there are two individuals who are specifically identified as being a friend of God or a friend of Jesus. Actually, one of God, one friend of God, one friend of Jesus. Abraham is one of those two. You may recall the story of Abraham. Abraham was called to come out of his homeland and travel to an unknown land, a land that God was going to show him and was going to give to his people as a promise. Now, are you here, Deanna, say something? We have 90 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that. I don't know if anybody else did or not. I thought that. And he called him to go to, we still, we're still under 12, <laughs> to go to a cold land. And, but not only that, Abraham, a hundred years old, we're pushing it, sporting a beautiful bride at night, and off they go, and God promises them that they're not only going to start a family, but they're going to have an offspring that cannot be numbered. You think about that, dear Abraham. No wonder they laughed at God over that. No wonder they began to put their put God's plan in action themselves. Get that? They put God's plan in action themselves. We're going to do what God wants us to do. We're going to help God out. And so they had an extra kid hanging around that God did not intend for them to have in Ishmael because they helped God out. But then, of course, eventually they had Isaac. You know the story. And just as they get this child that God has promised them, God says, okay, now, Abraham, I want you to kill him. Can you imagine that? Abraham takes him up the mountain to offer him. And God stops him just in time. James, in James, writing chapter 2, verse 23, I believe it is, identifies Abraham as a friend of God. Wow, what kind of weird friendship would that be? I'm wondering. Then the second one is, you may already know, Lazarus. Lazarus. In the New Testament, you remember Lazarus. He is the mother of Mary and Martha. Martha, who opened up her home to Jesus, I envision her having Sunday dinner. And have a big old cookie out there, and have everybody there eating, and Martha does all the cooking, and she gets frustrated when she doesn't get any help in the kitchen, nothing like at our house or anything like that. And she wants to know why she can't get some help. She's working and doing all this, all in all. And Mary, the sister, takes the alabaster box and breaks it open and anoints the feet of Jesus, and then she gets down there at his feet with her tears and with her hair begins to wipe his feet and Jesus praises her. But Lazarus, what does Lazarus do? Nothing. He gets sick and he dies. And he walks out of the tomb when Jesus calls him forth. That's all he does. And there's another time after he dies, he has to get the news that they're still wanting to kill him again. That's what Lazarus does. Lazarus never says a word in the entire Bible. But in John 11, 11, Jesus calls Lazarus friend. It's strange. It's strange. 
And I would need a whole lot more time than 90 minutes to get into all that. <laughs> Friendship with God. Those stories tell us Friendship with God or Jesus does not excuse us from life itself. Friendship with God does not excuse us from tests that come our way, or hardships, or sickness, or even death. Friendship with Jesus does not mean special treatment. It doesn't mean that at all. Yet, it would also seem that friendship with Jesus is the <coughs> goal. Wow. Membership in the body of Christ is good. Being a disciple of Jesus Christ, oh yes. But being a friend of Jesus, I'm starting to think that's something else. How do we become friends with Jesus? By going to church, by saying churchy things, those things are good, by quoting scriptures, by proudly displaying our bumper sticker that says, Honk if you love Jesus. Is being Jesus' friend as simple as accepting a friend request? We have friends. I have 500 and some friends on Facebook. About a hundred or so of them that will talk to me in Crowbirds. <laughs> oh, I know. Oh, I got to go along and all that. Jesus tells us. He tells us how to become his friend. The good news is Jesus tells us how to become his friend and the bad news is he tells us how to become his friend. He leaves it, I guess, sort of up to us. Right? He says, if you do what I command, do you notice the passage that I read to you this morning begins with Jesus saying, this is my command, and it ends with the same thing, this is my command. He pretty much makes it clear, his bookend, right, there's a bookend on each end of it, making it clear. He said, love each other as I have loved you. Now, Ricky, you've got to love everybody, including me. She tells me that, Karen, over and over. Don't know why, but what does she mean? Does she mean I just need to come and visit her every so often? For me, that would be enough. But does it mean that when she says, jump, Ricky, I have to say, now I, I do that. Does it mean I've got to be good to her, to her in every way? And you know what she did? She made me, you know, the one when you get sick, what do you call it? Power of attorney. Over her. Oh, you know what you're doing? Oh, the trust she puts in me. Right? The trust that she puts in me to have the power of the pen. But she tells me, you got to love me. Is that what she means? To make the right decision when it comes to being able to give the orders during that time? I figure what well, time it happens, Jerry, she'll be mad at me again and give it to somebody else. I <laughs> Bless her heart. Bless her heart. <laughs> Is that what Jesus means? I'm afraid it doesn't mean that. He goes further. Jesus always goes one step further than we want him to. Right? Always further. And he says, greater love Greater love has no one than this. They lay down his life for his friends. Of course, Jesus gave us the example of that. And we take that and run with it. Jesus died for me. I love that. And Jesus died for you. And it is an eternal truth. He died for our sins, laid down his life for me and for you so that we might have eternal life and not have to even worry about hell and the grave and so forth. His life is our life. His victory over the grave and death is our victory over the grave and death. It is real. But I think he's 
also talking to us about something, about what love is. Love goes beyond words. My favorite football player, and I guess I need to close, my favorite football player of all time is one that most of the world has long forgotten, unfortunately. His name was Joe Delaney. He played the whole two seasons with the Kansas City Chiefs. Bless their hearts. <laughs> <laughs> he played in the 1981-82 season. Joe Delaney was the AFC Rookie of the Year in 1981. He got injured next year and didn't do as well. But the offseason, Joe Delaney went back to his home in Mississippi. And he was going to speak at a function. And near the area where he was speaking, there was an abandoned pond. And it had a makeshift sign on it where somebody wrote by hand, no swimming. But during this time, a ruckus was going on out in the water and it got their attention. And what it was were three young fellows in the water and they were drowning. It was said that Joe Delaney immediately handed his wallet to someone, but then took off into the water to save the lives of these three young men whom he did not know. He did not know. And he did not know that one, the one who would live that day, would go on to become a drug addict and be in prison for most of his life. He didn't know that. He lived that boy did. But the other two boys drowned, along with Joe Delaney, who drowned trying to save their lives, who went into the water without giving it a second thought, knowing good and well he couldn't swim a lick. No the words that I read to you were on his monument. No greater love than this. Being a friend of Jesus. Wow. What a burden. But may he give us the strength to carry this burden. May he give us the strength to be his friend. So he can say one day, not just welcome home, my good and faithful servant, but welcome home, my good friend. The word of God for the people of God. Let's stand and sing together. Uh, gift of love. Beautiful young days for a week.
be meeting um, until the 26th in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, it's a very, not just a very important um, conference. But this conference is one where we need to be very much in prayer about. <coughs> the 23rd to the 26th, even before, uh, be a prayer that God will lead and direct the delegates who will be voting there during that time period. That may very well affect our book of discipline. It may not affect it. We don't know. But be in prayer for this entire time. Okay, um, throughout this. DPR meeting, SPRC meeting after church. Just pray. Lord, as we go forth from here today, confessing to you that we do not know what today or tomorrow holds. We do not know the future, but yet God we know. And we trust that you do. Lord, we pray, Lord, that through it all, that you just be near to us than ever before. And Lord, may we draw near to you. Lord, we pray that as our journeys continue, that, Lord, you help us, Lord, to have within our hearts a desire to be your friend. But, Lord, throughout this week, may we also find ourselves being real friends to others. Dismiss us now to go forth to be your church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.